A pleasant morning to all. We as a part of Great Tech High Tech Higher Education Cell welcome you all to attend the meeting on various courses that can be pursued abroad and the exams that can provide us an opportunity to pursue their studies abroad. We thank our honorable chairman, Colonel Dr. Vail R. Rangarajan, Vice Chairman Dr. Shavindar Rangarajan, Vice President KVD Kishore Kumar, Principal, Vice Principal and Staffs of Higher Education Cell for providing us the opportunity and platform to get to know about the abroad studies and opportunities. Now, on behalf of higher education, sir, I welcome Mr. T. L. Prabhu, uh, Business Develop Ma Development Manager, Manya Education Private Limited, to share his knowledge and ideas on abroad studies and TPR. Welcome, sir. So, what do you want to do next? So, this has to be an interactive session, so I'm not here to uh, take a, a seminar that is going to be uh, a one way download of knowledge or uh, download of whatever I am seeing so far. I want the session to be interactive. Let us try to interact with each other. Let us try to understand uh, what exactly is running through your mind when it comes to shaping up your career. And I try to download whatever is needed, whatever thing that I've got in my mind. Fine? So how many of you have a clear idea as to what you need to do next? You are in your third year, right? And before that, which are the departments which are here? Biotechnology. Okay, fine. So almost all the departments. So, what are the guys are planning to do next? You can uh, just uh, speak out. I don't think you need a mic, it's a very small one. So, what are the guys are planning to do next? MBA. Okay, yes. Anything else? M10. Okay, then? That's it, only two, right? MS. MS, okay. Three. Anything else? That's it? I mean, okay. <laughs> we have a discussion on that. So what do you need to do if you want to do an MBA? So what is the examination for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, good. What about your uh, MTech or ME? Yeah. Great. And uh, what about your uh, MS? Yeah. What examination is this? Yeah. Okay, TOEFL, IELTS or GRE. Fine. So I represent Mania, which is the uh, Indian partner for the Princeton Review. And my company was incorporated in the year 2002, and it's almost 15 years now. And recently we have been certified by AARC, which is uh, which sets the benchmark for recruitment of international students into American institutions. It's a body which certifies. And this is our Princeton Review. It's a 31-year-old company, which is a good test prep. Basically, Princeton Review trains students for all competitive examinations. So look at uh, going abroad. For exams like GRE, GMAT, SAT, ACD, all these examinations. And what do we do? This is what we do. We are into counseling, so visa consultation, interview preparation, test prep, yes, so your competitive examinations, GRE, GMAT, and all these examinations are admissions, so profile evaluation, and all these stuff. So we will have a look at that in detail. Now, that's it about my company. So we try to spend some time here. So why is it that uh, you hear a lot of people saying that uh, you need to go abroad for your post-graduation? Why not India? So I'm not raising out any anti-Indian slogans here. We try to understand the reality. So why do we say that the quality of education is good abroad when compared to the institution in India? So we find it's high time you guys start thinking in those lines and start talking about all these things. What is the reason for it? Is there a reason? System of education. Anything else? You can uh, be loud. Every answer is right. There is nothing called as a wrong answer. In a session. What else? System of education there? Okay. Migration? Maybe? You want to move to? A country like US or UK or uh, somewhere in Europe, or you want to settle down. Anything else? Any other reasons? Value of education. Okay. Why all these things are not working? Now that you have told why you need to go abroad, so I am able to understand that you guys know why you should go abroad. Now let me put it the other way around. So why not India? I don't even talk about GRE, Global and I, so. We are, trying to, we are going to try and understand the difference between the system of education in India and abroad. And what is it that as students we need to do to shape up our career in the right way. So why not India? 
opportunities are less. Can you be uh, a bit more specific when you say opportunities are less or uh, the chances are very minimal? Can you be a bit more specific on that? More? Okay, more number of students. So, can you call it a score competency? Use it. So, how many students graduate out of engineering colleges? In a year. So, multiples of thousands? And are there enough opportunities for everyone? Why? Why is it that there are not enough opportunities for everyone? Okay, supply is greater than demand. And uh, why is it that the supply which is getting into the market is not actually absorbed in the market? What is the reason for that? The question is clear. There is a lot of supply, but industries are not ready to take the, uh, the students or the pressures. So, what is the reason for that? Is there a reason? Technical knowledge? Anything else? Communication skills? Anything else? Okay, we we'll try to understand that. So, I hope everyone knows all these gentlemen here. So, a good education, as you all said, so communication, so supply, demand, all these things come into the picture. Good education always matters. And why go abroad? We have already discussed on these points. Lack of good institutes, so it's all self explanatory. You can just go through this slide. What about the return on investment? We we'll spent some time on that. Do you need it? Is it needed? Scholarship? Obviously, if someone would like to sponsor me, why will I not go to the US? I'll be more than happy to go. Okay. So these are the benefits of an education in a good university. Self-explanatory, you can just go through this. So what about this network or networking with people? So is it important? The question is clear. Networking with people, so is it needed? How many of you inside this classroom have uh, peers or uh, Someone from uh, outside Chennai. Outside Chennai, some other state, maybe your neighbors like Kerala, Karnataka. How many of you? Hardly a few, three or four. Anyone who has uh, friends outside the country? Only one. Right, let us focus. So these are all the uh, please focus. These are all the key aspects. So it's not about writing your GRE or Gopal and IELTS. It's about understanding why you need to actually go abroad. And then you will understand why you need to do your examinations. So what is the benefit of networking with people? Can someone say? Now, uh, assuming that we all speak Tamil, so you want to get a work done, or you want to extract a work from one of your friends sitting next to you, you know how to do it, right? So, supposing you have a Punjabi sitting next to you, do you know how to get the work done from him? Whatever you tell to your uh, Tamil friend will not work out to the Punjabi friend. You should know how to actually get the work done from people. And for that networking is important. And when you look at networking, you should have a kind of mix in a classroom where you have people from varied backgrounds. So that is the personal angle. So understanding how to work with people from different setups and different backgrounds. And the other thing is, now, you get into a very good institution, you have people from across the globe and you come out with a very good job, with a fat salary, you get into a good organization, you hold a, a very good position. The same way, the remaining 100 in your batch will also be inside organization with a, in a very good designation. And tomorrow for you to move from one place to another, or rather switching over becomes easy. That is the key of network. So now if you look at the IT company, so A will be working in TCS and suddenly you will see that guy working in CTS down the line in one year. So how does it happen? It's only two references. So networking is another important aspect and when you look at uh, going global for your education, this also gets facilitated. And of course, yes, high quality research. Now, why is it that in India we do not do research? 
We have been talking so much about research, research, research. What the hell is research? Uh, why we did not do any research so far in any of these institutions? <coughs> because of sponsors? Any other reason? That is not the reason. That is also one of the reasons, but that's not the main reason. Why we never had any research happening in any of our institutions? Of course, yes, for the last two to three years, there's a lot of research happening in Indian institutions. That's why we are slowly moving up the ladder when it comes to the global rankings. But why it was never done previously? So, when you choose a college, based on what will you choose the college? Ranking. Based on what the ranking is doing? Placement, exactly. That is where the problem starts. So in India, the traditional way of ranking an institution is only on three parameters. The placements, the infrastructure the institution has, and the number of doctorate holders in the institution, that's it. And research used to get a very marginal importance. So that something anywhere between 5 to 10 percent is what the importance was given to the research in an institution. Whereas now in 2016, it has moved towards research. Now 60 percent of the weightage when it comes to the ranking of an institution in India is given to research. And the remaining 40 percent to the placements and your infra and the number of doctorate. That is the reason why you find a lot of these institutions moving up the ladder. And when I say research, what is it that these guys do? Now, uh, you would have come across the uh, safety check feature in Facebook, which was activated during the floods in Chennai. So, do you think it was a feature developed by MP? Who would have done it actually? Or uh, rather, do you think these guys have the patience to sit and do all these things? They go to the best institutions, say for example, they go to institutions like uh, University of uh, Austin, Texas or Pennsylvania, they go to these universities, they find out one prop who is good at research and they just throw the money onto this particular prop. And they say, this is the problem I am having, this is the solution I want, you recruit whoever you want, take the students, do the research, give me the solution. That's it. It doesn't happen that way in India, you have an R&D department here who does it. So that is how research happens in the institutions abroad. So we normally pump in a lot of money on the premier institutions and it is only the students who are there in these institutions who do the research. It's not the employees of the company. So I'm just giving you one example of it. So that is about research. And uh, these are the uh, two types of intakes in the uh, US. So one is small and the other one is spring. So obviously fall is having a higher acceptance rate because more number of students apply and uh, you get a lot of scholarship opportunities during fall. And the classes would start in the month of August for fall and for spring it is in the month of January. So these are the, uh, the timelines in case you are planning to uh, apply for members in US. So this is about your scores. We will spend some time here. So what is the weightage of your uh, GRE or GMAT score? Just have a look at this slide and let me know. What is the weightage? 32? So, that's it about your GR. So, why do you go and get the remaining 70%? Okay. So, what is the Is it clear, the slide? The weightage for your GRE, GMAT or your TOEFL and IELTS score is only 15 to 30 percentage. If your GRE score is really good, so say for example you score a 330 out of 3 programs, and it's for fellowships. So, you require GRE for all these countries. So, this is the pattern. Now, I have a question here. 
you are uh, going abroad or uh, you are going to do your MPEC here, whatever it is. So why is it that you guys are tested in these areas, quant or uh, reasoning, verbal? Is there a reason for it? Is my question clear? You want to do your uh, MS in uh, What according to you you think you should be tested in? Biotech students, can you answer? You are done your UG in biotechnology, you want to go for PG in biotechnology. So you have an entrance examination. Should you be tested in quant reasoning and aptitude or should you be tested in something else? Does it make sense? You will take an examination like GATE, so there are a lot of sections in GATE, but still there is a weightage for aptitude in GATE. Does it make sense? Go for an examination like CAT, again you are testing on these parameters. Examination like GRE, you are testing on these parameters. Even a bank examination. So obviously it's just basic understanding that you want to get into a bank, you should be tested something in finance. But still, you end up being tested in these areas, quant, reasoning and verbal. What is the reason for this? Is there a reason? Is my question clear? Is there a reason for the students being tested in these areas? Can someone say why is it that you are testing in these areas? So think, I will take it at the end of the session. So this is the content of the test. Now let us get done with GI. Let us look at how to build your profile. Now, uh, someone from computer science, CS is there here, yeah, this room, is there or not, department, yes, okay. So if you want to do your project, say your summer project, so which company would you look at doing it and what would be your topic? Do you do projects? So do you guys do projects? So where do you do it? Hmm? It's not audio. Any software solutions company. Okay. So is there a is there a way to structure your project? Like uh, first you design your concept, you select the concept which you want to work okay. on, then you ask for advice from your uh, you know the people of the company. Great. So, is there a possibility to do a, to do a real time project? Not right now because my first level will not be acceptable for that level of real time project. No. I will tell you uh, how to do it. Or rather, I will tell you how it is being done. So, when you look at the uh, admits across the globe, and when I say your uh, profile is evaluated on the kind of internships or the kind of projects you do, Normally what they look at is whether you are getting into an organization where you can offer a real time solution to an existing situation or a problem. So if you are able to do that, then it is considered as a real time project. It's not about just getting into a company and doing something which someone says. So that's about a real time project. So these are the steps when it comes to uh, evaluating your profile, strengths and weaknesses, Letters of recommendation and helping you in your visa interviews. And this is how it works. So we all know that it is not possible for us to make a student who is consistently hitting 60 marks in mathematics, you cannot make that guy score 100 out of 100. But what you can do, you can make the guy score at least 85 or 90. So the first thing is when you look at going abroad or you want to go for an MS or an MBA, whatever it is. The first thing is you understand which are the easy targets for you, which are the possible institutions you can look at. And based on that, you need to look at scoring in your GRE examination and consecutively you, you should look at building your profile. So this is about the scholarships. You get into the best universities, you are fully funded, 100% scholarship is being offered and teaching assistantship and 
search as a search. So this would actually help you to take care of your expenditures. You don't need any support from your family. Your assistant ships. And this is how you need to plan the process. So any questions so far? Any questions on whatever you have seen so far? Shall I ask you questions? So this is what we do. So we basically train students for uh, the entire process. It's not only about your uh, GRE or uh, TOEFL and IELTS. We also take care of your admission consulting part. And these are the top admits we have got so far. And these are the list of students who have been fully funded. So our students who have got 100% fee waiver. And this is the edge which you get. If you look at the scores you have got. And recently we have been uh, chosen as the best uh, GRE trainer by rankings.com, which is a US based organization. And we have been chosen as number one. Now, so anyone with the answer for my question, why is it that you are interested in aptitude when it comes to competitive examinations? Can anyone make any guesses on that? To filter the candidates? Any other answers? Obviously yes. Any other answers? Any other answers? Why is it that you are tested in aptitude when it comes to competitive examinations? When you uh, want to do your medicine or your engineering, so what are the areas in which you are tested? Right after your schooling. If it is engineering, it is physics, chemistry and mathematics. If it is medicine, biology, physics and chemistry. So why is it that when it comes to your MTech or MBA or MS, you are not tested in those areas? Does it make sense? Is my question clear? How many of you have thought about it? Even when it comes to uh, companies coming down for placements in your campus, you are tested only on RTP. You are not tested on what you have studied for a good number of four years. What is the reason for that? So these are called as uh, employability skill sets. So I take one department, so Ripley students are there in this room. Ripley, anyone is there? You need to answer my question. Okay, so 2015-16, how many students were admitted in your college in the first year? Rough numbers. I don't need the exact numbers. How many? Thousand. So supposing your uh, chairman is asking your uh, dean, 2017 18, how many students will get admitted into year one? How do you, how do you get the numbers? So basic question, right? So 2015 16, there are 1000 students in year one. So 16 17, how many?
how many students can we expect to get admitted in year one? So how do you get the answer for it? It's very simple, right? Last three years, how many students have got admitted? Divided by three. You take the average. So whatever you do, how much of basic the task is, you need to be good at numbers. So numeracy skill sets is a mandate when it comes to your employment. Decision making, yes. So you should know how to react to a situation. Now business acumen, leadership, all these things, I hope you would agree with me on all these points. So someone who doesn't have these skill sets, it's not considered good for employment. Now we will uh, take a small example for decision making. So imagine you are uh, working in a bank. You are a manager in a bank. There are two people standing in front of you. One guy has uh, come for a gold loan. And the other one has lost his ATM card and he wants a replacement. Both the guys are standing in front of you. Which issue would you address first? That's fine. So, but I need a reason for it. If it is ATM, why? Or if it is about the gold loan, why? Can someone stand and say? Is my question clear? So can someone say why? Any answers? Okay, so there is one answer from one of your uh, batchmates. So he says that uh, the person who has come for the gold loan has uh, trusted you and has placed his trust on you and has uh, come to your bank. So you need to address that issue first. So now how do you take a decision on this? There are two ways of looking at it. One is the person who has uh, come in for the, uh, the ATM card replacement. He is already a customer. And under all probabilities, you would have had a very good rapport with him. So normally when we go to a bank, we do tend to make friends in the, uh, the branch. So, and provided you have got a good rapport with him, you can always ask him to wait for a few minutes. And you will not say no to him. So, what I do is I make this guy wait for a few minutes. I will tell him, please wait. I will address this guy first and then I will come back to you. And the guy was coming for the gold loan. There are two instances there. One is, he has coming for a gold loan because it's a financial emergency. So that is the humanitarian angle to it and if you ask him to wait, he will go to some other bank and you will go down your business. So two ways of looking at it. So what we will do is, I will go in for the gold loan first and then I will take the ATM card. This is what is logical reasoning. It's all over. How you act to a situation. So when you get into the modules, we don't say this is blood relations, this is deductions, uh, this is puzzles. So when you learn puzzles, you will know how to act when uh, someone is falling with you. When you learn blood relations, you will know how to react when you fall down, when you are riding your bike. We don't say like that, but all these aspects are bundled inside your audience. This is what it is. I'm capital of in a competitive examination, meet or GI, or GMAT or CAT. So what are these scores that I can get? So supposing I can get 300 in GI, or supposing I can get 80% in CAT, or 80% is not, 80 is not possible to get, that is 50% is get, I'm able to get. Then I should start looking at the other aspects which will help me to get into the set of institutions. That is how it needs to go. That is where we come to the picture. So the moment you get into our system, we first assess your profile and we bracket you. When I say we bracket you, we will tell you this is what I can do of scoring in your GRE. So say I'll give you a list of uh, tests which you will take and based on the performance in the test, I will tell you you are capable of scoring 280 in GR or I will tell you you are capable of scoring 300 in GR and you need to do all these things to strengthen your profile to match up with your poor performance in the GRE and if you do all these things, it is nothing but strengthening your profile you will get into this particular institution. It is not about dreaming to get into only Stanford or Caltech or Pennsylvania, it is not like that. It is about getting into an institution which you can get into. Not just because someone else has got it. 
So this is how it works. What is your SOP? Statement of purpose, why do you need it? What is an SOP? It's, it's an essay which someone who asks for us to go out. Not only there are a couple of items which also has something similar to an SOP. It's called as flag. Return analysis test. So it is nothing but an essay, maybe in a 700 word or an 800 word essay, which explains why is it that you should be one of the so many for applied for the institution to get into the institution. Or what is it that I have done? So I have decided I want to get into this particular institution for my MS. And this is the stream in which I want to do my uh, Master of Science. So have I done anything to claim it? That I should be the one of the so many who applied for this particular institution. So it's all about your achievements and accomplishments in your undergraduate. So you need to put in your SO. And scholarships. Better your profile, you will get a very good scholarship. And its T and R is nothing but teaching and research assistantships. So this is enough to take care of your uh, expenditures for one whole term whatever work you do. So it's not about a uh, heavy investment when it comes to going abroad. So the moment you land up there, you always get the assistantships. So research is not for people who are looking at an MS. Research assistantship is for doctorate, people who are going abroad for uh, a doctorate degree. So teaching assistantships is something which everyone gets, whoever goes abroad, provided it's in a good institution. This is how you start your uh, application process or rather your preparation process. These are the top arguments which you have got so far. And these are the list of students who are being fully funded. And these are the perfect scores which you have got. Students who took the training with us. And we have been uh, declared as the number one GRE test group there by Rankings.com. This now, anyone with an answer to my question? Why is it that you are testing an aptitude for your competitive examinations? So, in the uh, department of CS, how many students are there this year? The first years? What is the strength of your first years? <coughs> okay, what is the strength? No, supposing your first years, so when those guys will be there? They are already there at the campus? The juniors? No, so how many uh, students would uh, get admitted in your first year? 120. How do you know this number? Something which is going to happen, right? It's not yet happened. So, but 